Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Seth, one of the pastors here. I want to welcome you to Coastal Church and uh, thank you for being here with us in the fellowship hall. Um, this is uh, this is, this like takes us back to where we've come from. Feels like we're in the band room at the middle school. With the fluorescent lighting, it just, it just missing the smell, right? And those of you who are with us in the middle school, you remember that smell. You walk into the uh, the cafeteria, and it was unmistakable, right? The good news is the kids aren't in the hallway right now, so that's that's a plus. Um, but I want to I want to thank you for being here with us. I want to thank um, so many people have uh, have helped us uh, with our building this week and served and sacrificed their packs and their muscles and their time and used their skills. So we're grateful for that. We're grateful to have a building. Um, in the hurricane, I wasn't as grateful, but uh, <laughs> but I'm grateful that God has protected uh, us. And no matter whether this building passes away or not. Um, we will continue to reach out to our community. So, um, we, uh, <laughs> cannot quit. Some of you are just waiting for me to spill stuff. Ben. So, um, Hey, I want to, uh, we we're talking about, um, being holy, right? That is our W H O L L Y. That is our series this week. We're talking about holy loving and, uh, we, I want to just thank you guys for being a church that. You, you know, just wear the t-shirt, be love, but you are love. Um, last week, we posted photos of, of our team. About 17 of you went down to Fort Pierce and Lakewood Park and helped us, uh, helped us minister to tornado victims, unloading those, those trailer loads of, of supplies. Um, I didn't have to work out that day, so it was a benefit. It was a win-win. It was, it was busy. It was fun. It was also great to partner with the other churches that were, that were there. Um, but like every day of the week, I'm thankful that this place, God's using this place and these people to be loved to our community. And uh, we've had this tutoring program now for about five weeks. So I wanted to show you some pictures. Can I put those on the screen? Um, this, is, uh, this is our partnership with Feed the Lambs. And uh, every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., um, they're here. And I always, that's like the highlight of my day. Get out of meetings and come here and check in with people. I want to thank the 10 to 12 uh, coastal volunteers that come and serve and help these kids do better in school. And um, you guys see uh, top left here, that's Elena um, next to me um, with her princess book. A couple weeks ago, um, she got a few pages in. And then she had to go get, she, she's amazing at reading, but she was getting help with her math. And uh, so she, she got taken to, uh, to go focus on math with Miss Carol. And uh, she was really disappointed that she didn't get to finish the princess book. And I promised her, I said, next week, I'm going to be right here and you can read me the rest of that princess book. And then the hurricane happened. And I, ca I came in uh, last Monday and I said, hey, Elena. And she goes, sit. We're going to read the princess book. And I'm, I knew it was coming, so I was ready. But I was so grateful she remembered what page we were on, so we had to read the whole thing. It was, I got off easy, and uh, we were on the page with Belle, and I told her that's my, my wife's favorite princess. And, um, but, guys, this is such, this is a blessing for the families. Uh, we get, like, the, the parents are like, thank you so much for doing this. But we get the blessing. Like, it is a blessing just to be involved in these kids' lives. And already, you know, all these, you know, the little kids, um, they're cuter than a big kid. I'm sorry, just how it works, people. I'm sorry. They're just cuter. Okay, but you can see um, there's a big kid picture in there somewhere, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Top right. All right. Like, these kids didn't talk because they were too cool for school, you know? You know, you know how you guys are, Right. Like, we're starting to connect. I'm getting high fives. It's good stuff. And uh, it's great to see. Um, and by the way, there's some of your students, uh, teachers in here. So I'm learning from both ends. I learn about them from teachers, and I learn about the teachers from the students. So watch out. And I don't know if you notice here, top left, there's Mason. Uh, Mason had to come to work with me because he was out of school, and he got to read to some of the kids. So proud moment for me. But um, if you're interested in getting involved in that and you want to be love in that way, um, just show up. I'd recommend showing up. Um, even though it's 3 to 6, most kids don't get here till like 4. So if you kind of want to see what it's like, um, hang out at 4 right here. It's right here in this room. Um, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. All right. So um, well, I'm going to get a drink of water here as we get started. 
ah, that's fresh water. I, I got it from that cooler right back there. I moved that cooler from over here. And you're like, why are you telling me that? Um, because that cooler was over here and it needed moved over here because it was in the way. And uh, I just grabbed a hold of it and moved it. Well, and uh, so I slung that thing over my shoulder and that water container on the top just leapt off of it. Okay. Uh, spilling water all over the place. And uh, uh, you're, you know, the pastors of this church and the staff members and, and volunteers all laughed at your pastor. I made fun of me. And uh, anyway, we were able to salvage most of the water. We didn't put it back in. Um, it just uh, spilled. But you know when you go back there and you have that drink? Yep, when you have that drink that you just got from there, you're going to be thinking, did he really put it back in the bucket? Did he really get it back in the jug? Or is this clean, pure water? And uh, I was just going to see if anybody else wants a drink. Um, I was going to serve, serve, but you, you already got your drink, uh, Amber. But, you know, if anybody else wants nice drink, I got you set, man. Who's up? You guys want? Third baby. You drink vinegar? All right. All right. Well, we have a crazy person. This will hurt your teeth. Um, I knew we were going to have trouble in second service. First service is like, you know, they have a brain. Second service is like, you Let's get out. We were we drinking at church. This is not pastor. You know. Um, all right. I want to do this to you, but... No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. No, it's all right. Another another sermon illustration. Good to know. Logged. No, uh, back out. I'm sorry. So yeah. Anyway, back to this. Okay. Um, this is nice. This is like like sitting in the living room. Um, what are you up to? Yeah, oh, we're gonna. You're gonna find out. Stay tuned. So here's the thing. Like a lot of us, like you know, we're drinking the water, but we're serving the vinegar. We follow a God that says, I am love. God is love. We read a Bible that says, they'll know us by our love. But you can't be drinking water and serving up vinegar. You can't be pretending that you're following God and a follower of Jesus and you don't know how to love. And so this week we're talking about thoroughly love. And somebody's like, he's getting nasty. It's not even started yet. Uh, it's because we have a real reputation problem with Christianity. Like, you ever try to invite somebody to church? They're like, it's one of those weird churches, isn't it? Like, well, if the pastor tried to serve vinegar and somebody was ready to drink it. Like, you know, yeah, it's weird. But it's not weird, really. It's just weird. One weird. Two weirds is really weird. That's why people, like, they watch online before they show up. They're like, how bad is this? Let's see. Okay, okay. Pastor's a little quirky, but we can handle that. Like, okay. And they're going to find out, like, what type of Christian are you? Because they've seen so many bad examples. They've seen so many people say, we, we love. You know, God is love. And then they treat people with hate. And they're known for what they're against instead of what they're for. And the way that they communicate what they're against isn't loving. So don't wear the Be Love shirt, slap a Be Love bumper sticker on the back of your car and drive like a freaking maniac. Don't drink out of the Stanley look-alike Be Love nug, okay? And treat people like trash. Hey there. Now, I'm sure nobody here at this church is like that. Um, there's a reason why I don't make available the bumper stickers to all of y'all. Okay? <laughs> Just... You know, we just kind of hold those back. You know, I was behind you, and you here you go. You, you let me out in traffic. I was actually Lori, our greeting team director. Um, I was at Walmart, and you know how people don't know that it's pedestrians get the right of way, and you're about halfway through, and you're like, am I going to get mowed over? Lori comes up. She looks. I'm not sure she, like, realized it was me. But she's like, and then she realized it's me and is like waving. And I'm like, oh, good thing. Good thing she didn't try to run me over. Well, you know, and then I didn't be, I, I wouldn't be, sometimes I don't behave like I should when somebody tries to hurt me. And like, 
here's the thing, like we have to, if we're going to drink water and say, so, hey, I want to serve you up a nice glass of Jesus, then we've got to make sure that's what's in the cup. And it won't be in the cup if it isn't in you. So you are not whole if you are not loving holy. You are not complete. You are not a fire of Jesus, can I just say, if you are not holy loving. The fruit isn't there. So we are on our series called Holy, and uh, our key verse is 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Let's read it together. 3, 2, 1. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. You see that whole spirit and soul and body, and you see that holy, there's all that word play in there. We are holy and all of us is involved in following Jesus. We wholly follow Jesus. So week one, we, we had holy, holy, holy. You guys remember the inner tube that had holes? You can't be filled with the Holy Spirit if you don't allow him to first make you new and fresh again. Um, week two, holy stop busyness will rob you of your holiness. The most holy thing you can do is stop sometimes. Week four, repentance. That's a good one. Some of you need to listen to that. Some of you need to go back on that one. Um, you cannot say you're a father of Jesus, but you haven't turned away from your past behavior. It, it, repentance means that you make a 180 and there's some tracks behind you going in the opposite direction of where you were going before. When God changes, when you decide to follow Jesus, you change your mind and then he changes your heart. And when your heart changes, your actions change. If your actions haven't changed, there's a heart problem and a head problem that need addressed. Week five, that was last week. There's a lot of these. And um, week five is your focus determines your future. Um, you're running towards whatever you're focused on. If you're focused on fear and anxiety and worry, guess where you're going to end up? Right there. Um, nothing will make you more unwhole and more disintegrated than trying to follow Jesus while looking in another direction. And uh, that is what this series is about. It's about being holy, being fully integrated with God, having, uh, having God live in you, you living in God, and being one with Him. When we uh, don't live lives in accordance with the integration with God that we have, uh, we become disintegrated. Now, um, this is week six. Is it week six? Yeah. This is week six, and we're talking about holy love, but I got a secret for you. We have a bonus sermon coming up next week. Holy believe. Thank you, one staff person. Is that because y'all don't have to redevelop the slides yet? Um, week seven is holy believe. All right, so uh, this week, holy love. How do we do that? How do we do that? Number one. Love, loved. Love, love. We're going to be in John chapter 15. We're going to start in verse 9. Love, love. It says in verse 9 of John chapter 15, I've loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. Our mission is to live loved. By the way, they can't tell me to stay on my little post, you know, my little container. They put me in the, the preaching platform because um, there isn't one. Uh, last service, there was nobody in the first two rows. I just set up right here. I was like, hey, you can run, but you can't hide. But my wife's here, and uh, I, so I'm, she's protected you. I, I don't want to be, like, out of her sight, you know. So I'm, here I am. Um, but, like, where was I? I need to go back and listen to Holy Focus. All right, as I was saying, our mission statement is to live lamb by God and love others with God's love. You cannot lamb others with God's love if you have not first become a recipient. This is the problem when you don't have your cup full or it's full of vinegar and you're like, hey everybody, you want Jesus? Here's Jesus. That's not Jesus. <laughs> that is not Jesus. We need to first love from a place of being loved. So that's where we get love, loved. Um, if you're pouring out what's inside of you and it isn't love, you're poisoning the people around you instead of providing refreshment. Um, Christians, if you're a Christian, if you follow, if you, uh, 
if you pour out hate around people around you because they believe differently than you or they don't vote the same way as you or they look differently than you, please stop telling people you're a Christian. Please stop telling them you're a Christ follower. Like, we would have enough trouble trying to invite people to church without you. You know, you or them. Let's just say them. You know, those other people. Uh, you know, behaving in such a way that makes it impossible for people to say yes to showing up at church, let alone yes to being one with Jesus. So, um, know what you're pouring out before you start pouring it. Here's, here's the caveat. Not all of you or them are easy to love. What? Yeah. You know who you are. Okay, some of you are not, yeah, you're elbowing, you're pointing. Some of you are not easy to love. Some of you, you ever, um, so like at my house, sometimes there's water wars. My wife hates this, by the way. That anyone do this, like somebody washing dishes and they just start spraying people with the, with the sprinkler thing, the, the sprayer, rinser thing. That doesn't happen at your house, only mine. <laughs> okay. So I did that and uh, my, my second oldest son, my middle son, decided he's going to get smart and throw his water. This is a while ago. Throws water in my face with a cup. Yeah, you did that. Yeah, of course he does it. Of course you don't. Of course you don't. Yep. But I do. You know, sometimes when you hand somebody a nice glass of water, you know, and it feels like, you know, they slap it, you know, slap it right out of your hand. Sometimes love on people a little bit like that. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to be abused or tolerate that kind of behavior. You can have good boundaries and love in a healthy way. But some people are difficult to love and we're still supposed to love them. You know, like my son, who doesn't remember bad things he's done. <laughs> so, all right. Not everyone's easy to love. All right, I want to show you, let's go back, uh, if you were to look at that verse. It says, remain in my love. And then I have a, a just because we're in here doesn't mean we get to take a break from our Greek education, okay? Meno, everybody say meno. Meno, it means to dwell, remain. I, I, let me just read so I don't make stuff up. So, turn, abide, make your home within. Um, remain in my ram, it says. Make your home within God's love. Make your home. So, Jeremy, you know, the journey, like, make it a part of your daily journey to live and exist and, and still within God's love. So God sent his one and only son to be the ambassador of love. And then he told us in 2 Corinthians that we are his ambassadors. We're the ambassadors. And he uses the word reconciliation, which is what you do when love's been defiled. You need reconciliation. So we are, we are the ones who are to go out into the world and to love as we are loved. All right, next, number two, love obediently. By the way, he only played two, uh, three songs, so that gives me more time. Get you out of here by like 1.30. <laughs> All right, just in time to write, help, help next door, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So that's the challenge then, huh? Keep him here till two and then just go right over. You going to feed him? Sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I have never preached that long in my life. Um, actually, there was one time in Uganda, they like, they value the preacher to preach very long. Now, mind you, like, if I'm preaching in English, then somebody has to translate. That's twice as long, right? I preached for two and a half hours, and uh, there wasn't much of me left. Like, the dust and the African dust is coming through, so we're not doing that today. And you're welcome. <laughs> And it's only one language, so we're not even going to try. All right, love obediently. What does this mean? Let's read John 15, 10 through 11, and I'm gonna, we'll, we'll spend a little more time there. All right, when, uh, when you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I've told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Now, what are the commandments of Jesus? Some of you remember this. If you've read through the New Testament, especially the Gospels, his commandments, he says the greatest commandments are 
love God and love people. Matthew twenty two thirty seven to 40, we'll read it real quick. Jesus replied, you must love your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. That's holy. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commands. So he says, love God, love people. This is, he says, keep my commands and you'll remain in my love. And then your joy is going to be complete. Um, now let's read verse 11, John chapter 15, verse 11 in the NIV. I mean, actually, it doesn't matter which translation, but this one highlights it a little better. Verse 11 of John 15, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Now, let's look at this passage. Okay, you see the part that says, my joy will be in you. Okay, I'm not seeing the NLT. I'm not seeing the NIV. We got it up there? The, I need the NIV up there. We had it last time. Open the spirit. All right. We lost it in between services. John chapter 15, 11. NIV, we have it. I heard. All right. We'll go from here. Filled with my joy. Let's take that, let's take that section right there. Do you want to know what that Greek word is that's translated filled with my joy? Meno. If you keep my commandments... You remain in my love. And if you remain in my love, you remain in or you live in your, your journey, your life's journey is in joy. You got that? That's why, and, you know, we don't just do the Greek, you know, so it sounds like you're smart. We do this because there's new things that are uncovered when you begin to look back at the original language. So that my joy will be in you. So we have, uh, we want to live and sojourn in his love. We do this by keeping his commandments. Now, of course, we, we had those two, you know, love God with all your heart, soul, mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Very simple. But he also says all the rest of them hang on those. Okay, so it doesn't mean you can do whatever you want and just say, I love Jesus and you. No, you actually don't love God if you behave in a way that is contrary to the way that he's designed you for. You're actually disintegrated, not integrated, if you're living in a way that isn't true of what, how God created you to live. And so, likewise, like the people that, um, you know, have issues with loving people, some people live in a way that I, and then they say they're a believer. Um, on Sunday, they're like, yay, Jesus. Uh, on Saturday night, though, they're like, I need to get some. And some of you, you know, you need to go Urban Dictionary and look that up. Like, if you live in one way on Saturday night and another way on Sunday morning, and some of you felt really uncomfortable because you related to me. Um, like, if you're living two different ways, you cannot say, I'm following Jesus. You cannot say, I'm wholly obedient and I'm living in the love of God. Now, I want to be really careful here. I want you to know that your behavior does not determine how much God loves you. Remember, if we go back to that Greek word, meno, this is a matter of you living in God's love. And that joy is the benefit of living in God's love. He doesn't love you any less just because you choose to live outside of God's love. You just get less joy and less of the benefits of living within God's love. Do you understand? That'll love you less because of your stupid behavior. Um, okay, here's, here's, here's what that's like. That's like saying, um, praise Jesus, I'm going to take a drink. And then um, what you serve uh, later, or what you try to drink later, I've got a different glass. Um, this glass, it's clean. All right, it looks beautiful. I put it in a nice glass so you could see that it really is clear. Old body want a drink? This is fresh from the toilet in the coastal house. <laughs> and it's from the bowl, not the tank. How did you harvest it, you ask? That's none of your business. Um, Which van did it come from? Yeah, all the way over there that gets used by seven different model study groups during the week and cleaned once. Uh, all right, sometimes I go in there and clean the toilet, let me just be honest. And, but I didn't clean it this morning. I was busy. 
And uh, but some of you, you know, you have you have defilements in your body, and then you're like serving up Jesus, and they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, weren't you? Don't you? And you start, you know, maybe just a little, just a little bit, right? And then would you want to drink this? Right, just it's just a little defilement, right? No, like like if you if you just a little defiled, you're all the way defiled. If, You've got to be holy in or holy. You're not. And don't be drinking toilet water. First Peter one twenty two. Not on the screen. And this one, I mean it. Since you have purified your souls, I was willing it up there, but this one is really not on there. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. You cannot wholly love if you don't if it doesn't come from a pure heart. Now God can use your imperfections, okay? But if you have no interest in being obedient to, to who God's created you to be, you cannot live in a way that's not that's not impure. All right, so here's the thing. We see that we get joy from remaining in God's love. If you are not feeling like you are living, sojourning, abiding, remaining in joy that comes from God, you might be looking for joy in some other place. You might be looking for joy in a place that just isn't ever going to deliver it in a dependable way. So check where you're getting your water from so that you can love holy, so that you can have joy holy. Number three, love sacrificially. So you're like, ooh, he is going to let us out early. It's not over yet. So Jesus has been building up to this moment. He's kind of ratcheted up. He's, he's like, hey, um... I want you to love, love. You know, God loves you so much. And all the disciples are like, yeah. You know, and it, I don't know if that's how they talk. Like, yes, it's wonderful. We follow you, Jesus. And then, and then it's like, oh, my joy will be complete if I live in your love. Oh, fantastic. I love this. And then, right, he, he kicks her up a notch. Bam. Verse 12. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I've loved you. Now, right now, in, in this moment, in the Bible, Jesus has not yet died for humanity. So they're like, eh, all right, we wash feet, we do a few things, you know, right? This is what they're thinking. But he's already told them that he's going to die for the sins of the world. And so now we have the, we have the privilege of looking back and seeing how God, how Jesus loved. And so... This ratchet sits up just a few more notches. In fact, he gets everybody nodding and excited about having horror joy and my joy is going to be complete and remaining and sojourning always going to be there. And then he gets to verse 13 and I think maybe the happy face uh, faded from their, from their faces when, he realized, when they realize what he's going to say next. Verse 13 says, There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. And he's like, he's in one sentence, he's saying, I'm going to lay down my life for you. But he's also saying, this is what I'm calling you to do. Now, I'm not calling you all to die today. Not physically anyway. But this word that says lay aside is tithemi. Everybody want to say it? Tithemi. It means to put aside, to move it over so that there's room for something else here. And so... Some of you are like, I just want to have friends. I don't have friends. I wish I had friends. It's so hard to have friends these days. But you, you disappear right after church, like, like, where did that person go? And then and the pastor, like, I can't remember everybody who's here and who's not, so please don't hold me accountable for that. But if I notice you're not here, and, you know, I'll be like, hey, I didn't get it. Or if you're here and I didn't get a chance to say hi, I'm like, hey, I'm so sorry I didn't get a chance to say hi. Hi. You know, um, I can't do that for everybody. Um, but when I notice it, I try. But if you like disappear, and I can't be everybody's friend, by the way, you got to have friends outside of me. Okay. But if you're like, I don't have any friends, but then you disappear, you get here late, right? You get here late and you leave early. Like as soon as they start talking about money, you're like, <sighs> right? Just, you know, oh man, he knows. All right. So like, it's harder to get out of here, right? Without notice than it is over there when we get the lights down low and, uh, like, you can't say, I watch friends, and then, like, not be around. And that happens way outside of Sunday mornings. Like, when your neighbor wants to talk and you're too busy, 
we need to be willing to be like, hey, how are you doing? Good. Love people wholly. Not just the ones that attend Coastal, but everyone you come in contact with. Love sacrificially. So he tells them, hey, um, lay down your lives. Brad. Lay aside. Stop caring. It really is hard to make friends um, as an adult. As a preschooler, um, this cute girl right here is no longer a preschooler. Um, Samantha, like everybody, was her friend, right? And when we talk about having a birthday party, everybody's invited to her birthday party, right? And it, like everybody, she was everybody's friend. She, uh, she kind of gets it from me. And uh, like, but when you get older, like in uh, middle school, you're like, nobody's your friend, right? And in high school, you got like, you got, you get the click, you know, just, just those friends. And then when you become an adult, it's like, you just get so busy and consumed. Like it's hard to lay us, it's harder to lay aside stuff and to have friends. And, um, uh, by the way, my best friend, uh, one of my best friends, but probably the most loyal friend, um, Bill Bass, who passed away recently, like he would just say, uh, he'd show up at, you know, at, at the house and be like, load up, you're too stressed out, we're going fishing, right? But like, he's like, and I, you didn't have a choice, okay? It was, it was t some of you need to lay aside your life and invite your pastor to go fit. No, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> No, you, you need to lay aside your life. Like, don't be so serious that you can't stop for a friend. Um, that week that I was doing Bill's funeral, it was a busy week. We had all kinds of stuff going on. Helene was happening, and we had some stuff going on, and, and I have to prepare extra stuff. And um, my dad's boss is like, hey, tell your son, you know, we're going to go fishing. And I'm like, this is the wrong week, okay? But, you know, I sucked it up. But some of you, it's not that, that's not sacrificial. Some of you really, really, really need to learn what it's like to lay aside your life and be willing to serve your neighbors. Some of your neighbors, you still have um, debris in the yard. Maybe you could do that. Some of your neighbors just need someone to listen. They just need someone to talk to. And if you invited your friend to watch online today, they're going to expect their lawn to clean, be cleaned up. <laughs> so another thing about um, loving sacrificially, it requires that sometimes if we're going to have friends, if we're going to love holy, we also have to forgive. Because even our best friends do stupid stuff and we have to forgive them. You're not going to ever have friends. You're not ever going to be able to love holy if you don't learn how to love like Jesus did. And that means sometimes you love people when they're doing stupid things. And you forgive them and you love them beyond that moment. That's how Jesus loved you. Um, you may have had other experiences in church or with church people that have like turned you off completely from God. Let me tell you how God loved you. In Isaiah chapter 53, 5, it says, But he was pierced for our rebellion, speaking of Jesus, crushed for our sins, he was beaten. This is critical. So we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for going to the cross for us. Thank you for loving us sacrificially. You said that you loved as God, as your Father loved you, and we're to love as you've loved us. Help us to love. Help our joy to be full. Help us to be legit so we can be holy, loving of everyone in our lives. Lord, maybe there are some here that need to forgive. Maybe there's some here that need to accept your love. I want to just provide that opportunity. So Lord, right now, would you move in the hearts of people here? If you're here and you need to forgive somebody, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. This, this uh, harsh lighting, you're going to be hesitant to do so. And I don't need to see your hand. I know there's people who need to forgive in here. 
So I want to pray for you right now. Jesus, would you please give the same love that you have. Give that love to the person who needs to forgive. May they forgive with boundaries, being able to love this person beyond their foolishness. And may you release them of that bitterness, that vinegar that they've been holding on to. Now, Jesus, I want to talk to those in the room who are, who've yet to put their faith in you. Jesus, would you move in their hearts, get them ready to be wholly loved by you. You may have been so turned off by the vinegar that you've seen in religion and even Christianity. But right now, all that's here is just you and Jesus. We're not going to call you forward or raise your hand. Just you and Jesus. Would you please give him a chance to love you wholly? You can do that right where you're at. You make that decision. You just say, I choose Jesus. And would you, would you pray to him right now? You don't, have a, you don't have to have any experience. I'll just tell you something to say. You can rephrase it or say it exactly. It's just simple. And we pray this prayer from time to time together. And we're going to pray it together now so that you feel comfortable praying it before God for the first time. So together, let's repeat this out loud to make those feel comfortable who are saying it for the first time. God, I admit I've sinned. I believe that you've rescued me. And from this day forward, I commit my life to you. Through the city, Lord, and I can be the world I just be the boss in my life. Be the boss of our word. Amen. So if you if you um, need a little extra help growing in your faith, either with forgiveness or loving from a place of being loved, or you decided to follow Jesus for the first time, I'd love to help you out. Some of our other staff and our other leaders would would be willing to help you. Um, if you can indicate that on a connect card that's in front of you, or you can text uh, next to the number on the screen. We want to be a church that supports you and helps you grow in your faith. Um, sure, you don't have to do that, you know, to, to engage with Jesus. You don't need us as the middleman, but we can help you. We can point you and we can cheer for you along the way. God bless you.